Hello, I'm Ben Godwin. Welcome to the Word Workshop recorded at the Good Springs Full Gospel Church. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. My wife Michelle and I have pastored the Good Springs Full Gospel Church since 1999. A spirit-filled church with a hunger for God and a heart for people. Good Springs Full Gospel Church is located in Walker County on Highway 269, 10 miles south of Jasper. The prophet said that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. So prepare your hearts to receive from the Word, because when all else fails, God's Word works. Time. 
to raise his hands in victory for me. But an angry crowd crucified this king who wore their crown, and they gladly watched the champion going down. But I will never count him out, cause I'm a witness of that day he rose to retain the title, champion of love. He's higher than the highest, he's greater than the great. No one will ever take his crown away. He's more mighty than the mightiest, he reigns from above.
placed him in a borrowed tomb at the ending of that day. They watched as Joseph rolled the stone and then they sadly walked away. But then suddenly within their broken hearts echoed the words they heard him say, don't weep for me, I'll live again on resurrection. Resurrection morn, Jesus won the victory. And at the breaking of the dawn, they went running to the tomb, for he was gone. Mary cried and said, My Savior lives. Resurrection morn. He walked along beside of them. Still they did not believe. He sat with them and broke the bread. And then their eyes were made to see. As they watched him taken from their sides, behold, two men robed in white said, Like he ascends, he'll come again on resurrection morn. Resurrection morn. to set the captive free resurrection born Jesus won the victory and at the breaking of the dawn they went running to the tomb for he cried and said, my Savior lives on resurrection morn. Mary cried and said, my Savior lives on resurrection morn. Resurrection morn. Praise God. Amen. Open your Bible, if you will, please, to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 11. I'm going to read one verse in just a moment. Give me about 10 or 15 minutes to share the word of the Lord, and then we're going to share communion together. I do want to show you a couple things that I liked. Think about this. If an egg is broken by the outside force, life ends. If it's broken by an inside force, life begins. Great things always begin from the inside. How many glad he's working on the inside? Amen. I saw some great church signs I wanted to share with you. The price of almost everything has gone up. Almost. Salvation is still free. That's a deal. Amen. How about this church sign? We celebrate Easter 52 times a year. Join us any Easter Sunday. <laughs> Pretty good. I like this one so much I borrowed it and put it out front. No bunny loves you like Jesus. <laughs> Tell somebody, no bunny loves you like Jesus. <laughs> Go to church. If Jesus can rise from the dead, you can rise from the bed. 
And don't leave your Easter bunny in the car. It might end up looking like a mean dog. <laughs> You've ever seen those old uh, commercials? Silly rabbit, tricks are for kids. Silly rabbit, Easter is for Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And this cracked me up, old Maxine. She says, I won't say my memory's bad, but it's to the point now where I can hide my own Easter eggs. <laughs> Might as well laugh about it. Praise God. I want to use for a subject this morning, heaven's greatest hero. Heaven's greatest hero. This world is hungry for a hero. So let me point you to the greatest hero in the history of humanity. His name is Jesus Christ. How many glad you know him today? Let me read one scripture. We'll put it on the screen for you to read along with us. But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised Christ up from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. In you, I want you to think about that. The same power that brought Jesus out of the grave lives in you. The same power lives in you. Now, I know he's going to give life to my body in the sweet by and by at the resurrection, but how many believe that he will give life to your spirit right here, right now, if you'll believe and call on his name? This world is looking for a hero. Have you noticed? It's obvious by the flood of superhero movies that have been made in the past 20 to 30 years. Iron Man, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Black Panther, Incredible Hulk, Captain America, Captain Marvel, The Avengers, Justice League. That's just to name a few of the more popular ones. These movies cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make and they rake in billions of dollars. Hollywood keeps churning out the sequels and there's even more in the pipeline. Anybody like superheroes beside me? Afraid to admit it in church? It's all right. God will forgive you. As much as people enjoy escaping reality and watching these fantasy films, the truth is... Real heroes don't wear capes and costumes. The greatest hero of all wore a robe and sandals. I love this meme that I've seen many places. It says, not all superheroes wear capes. Mine wore a cross. So let's take a moment, let's compare and let's contrast the superheroes of this world with our supernatural savior. Let's point out a couple of things. Number one, superheroes have superpowers, right? Their superpowers are usually derived from some kind of bizarre accident. For example, the Incredible Hulk. Remember, Bruce Banner gets exposed to radiation and suddenly becomes a phenomenal freak of nature. Peter Parker was bit by a radioactive spider and got Supernatural powers. Bruce Wayne fell into a bat cave. <laughs> and you know the rest of the story. Jesus' supernatural powers are not an accident. I said they're not an accident. They were given to him by God the Father. I want to give you a scripture that makes that abundantly clear. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus did not get his power from radiation or spiders or bats. He received them from the God of the universe. That scripture says how God anointed Jesus with power. The word there, the Greek word is dunamis. Everybody say dunamis. That's the word from which we derive our English words dynamic and dynamite. And here's the good news. The same power of the Holy Spirit that he has has been given to you and I. Acts 1.8, behold, you shall receive dunamis, power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. 
How many glad the same power of Jesus lives and dwells and works and operates in your life? Amen? Praise God. Talk about superpowers. Jesus saves lost souls. He heals sick bodies. He redeems and restores broken lives. He delivers the demon possessed. Gives eternal life to all those who believe on his name. Read the gospels, folks. What did Jesus do? That scripture said he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Think about what Jesus did while he was here. He opened blind eyes and deaf ears. He cleansed the lepers. He made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. He walked on water. He cast out demons. He fed the multitudes with a sack lunch. Think about it. He calmed storms with just his words. He raised at least three people from the dead that are documented in the gospels, probably more that were not recorded. After his resurrection, he walked through walls. He appeared and disappeared at will. And then when he ascended, I'm just gonna modernize it and say he flew on up to heaven. Hallelujah. We're not talking about fiction. We're talking about a mighty God. I said a mighty God, hallelujah. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God is he. And let me give you another scripture right here. Skeptics say, oh, I don't believe in miracles. Here's what the Bible says, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever. I heard about a skeptic who came to a famous preacher who was a... Uh, had a miracle ministry and they just looked at him blank in the face and said, I don't believe in miracles. And that preacher looked at him and said, well, when you need a miracle, you'll start believing in them. How many know Jesus is still the same? Do you believe if he saved in Bible times, he still saves today? Do you believe if he healed in Bible times, he still heals today? Do you believe if he delivered people in Bible times, he still delivers today? If he filled people with the Holy Spirit in Bible times, how many thank God he still is the same today? Hallelujah. You've come too late to tell me miracles aren't real. I was hit by a car when I was seven years old, lost three inches of bone, blown out the side of my leg. I was in two accidents within 30 minutes. The devil wanted to take me down and take me out. But praise God, the doctors wanted to do bone graft surgery. Said I'd limp the rest of my life. My left leg would always be shorter than my right leg. I'm here today to tell you by prayer, hallelujah, my legs are the same length. I do not limp and I can still play basketball. I'm old, fat, and slow, but I can still play hoops, baby. Hallelujah. Because we serve a miracle-working God. Point number two is superheroes have dual identities. Most superheroes have a normal human identity, which is a disguise for a secret superhuman identity. For instance, reporter Clark Kent doubles as Bruce Wayne is a cover identity for Boy, you guys know your superheroes. Science nerd and whiz kid, Peter Parker is the alter ego for inventor and billionaire, Tony Stark is the human alias for man, you guys do know your superhero. Diana Prince is Wonder Woman. Bruce Banner is the Hulk and so on and so on. There's dual identities. Well, think about this. Jesus had a human identity as a common carpenter. People said, is not this the carpenter? Oh, but he was more than a carpenter. I have a feeling he just had a knack for building things. Oh, by the way, he was the creator of the universe. He put the stars in space. He hung the moon in place. He was more than a man. His spiritual identity was the Christ the Messiah, the anointed one. Skeptics thought he was too human to be superhuman <laughs> until he did things nobody else could do. And they marveled and they shook their head in astonishment and said, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey his voice? 
I got news for you, he was more than a man. I said he was more than a man. Hallelujah. He was 100% man and 100% God. He was and is Emmanuel, God with us. In fact, the angel said that his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. How many glad he came to save you? I want to share just a moment about this dual nature. He was God and man. He was human and divine. He was creator and creation. He was heavenly and he was earthly. He was the son of God and the son of man. He was Christ. He was a carpenter. He was the lion and he's the lamb. Behold the lamb of God. As God, he astounded the doctors and the lawyers in the temple. As man, he went to Nazareth and was obedient to his parents. As God, he created all things. As a man, he had to learn how to build furniture in a carpenter shop. As God, he drove demons out of people. As a man, he was tempted by the devil. Dual nature. As God, he fed the multitude. As man, he got hungry himself. As God, he was all powerful. As man, he got tired and needed to sleep. As God, he was invincible. As a man, he was overpowered and tortured by Roman soldiers. As God, he was raised from the dead, but as a man, he tasted death for every man and allowed himself to be killed. As a man, he laid in the tomb for three days. <laughs> but as God, he rose again and conquered death, hell, and the grave. Anybody know who I'm talking about today? He said, I am he that liveth and was dead, but behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and hell. All right, one more point about superheroes. Superheroes save the planet from supervillains, right? I have a t-shirt, Brother Terry, where are you? Way in the back. Brother Terry bought me this t-shirt. It has this graphic on it. It's Jesus sitting with the superheroes and it says, and that's how I saved the world. T-shirt's worn out, brother, but I love it. <laughs> Praise God. I want you to think about this. One thing most superhero stories have in common is a sinister supervillain, right? Why? To make the hero look more heroic. For instance, Batman needs criminals to overcome. Joker, Riddler, Penguin. Superman needs evil aliens to defeat. Spider-Man needs superhuman rivals to conquer. Without a villain, the hero has nothing or no one to overcome. Well, Jesus is the greatest superhero who defeated the world's greatest supervillains. Hallelujah. He conquered sin. He conquered sickness. He conquered Satan. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that when Jesus was crucified, and this is what his name means, Jehovah is salvation. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. How many glad you're saved today? What does that mean? I'm saved from the penalty of sin. I'm saved from the power of sin. And one day I'm going to be saved from the presence of sin altogether. Say it with me. I was saved. That's justification. Say it with me. I am being saved from the power of sin. That's sanctification. But how many know it's not over yet? One day we will be saved. Say it, I will be saved from the presence of sin altogether. That's glorification. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can do that. He's the Savior of the world. The Bible declares that when Jesus came, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, look at this scripture with me, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Fear, the fear of death was Satan's greatest weapon. 
But when Jesus died, he took the devil's biggest weapon and he turned it on him. Remember David and Goliath? What killed Goliath? It wasn't a rock. David slung that sling, smacked him in the head and stunned him, maybe knocked him unconscious, but that's not what killed him. He took Goliath's own sword and decapitated him. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He took the devil's biggest weapon, which is death, hallelujah, and he turned it on him. Now we don't have to fear death. Now we don't have to live dreading death. Why? Because death no longer has the sting it used to have because Jesus conquered it. Glory to God. Look at somebody and say, I'm gonna live forever. In fact, turn back to him and says, if Jesus comes back today, you can have my car. I won't need it. Here's what Jesus did. He crushed on the cross. He crushed the head of the serpent. You say, oh, Brother Ben, wait a second. What about all the evil, the war in Ukraine and the hunger and poverty and crime? What about all the evil that is rampant in the world today? Well, what happens when you cut the head off of a snake? We call it the death rose. They writhe, they slither, they flip, they flop. But they're rendered powerless. Hallelujah. The devil's on a short leash. He knows he has but a short time. That's why there's so much evil raging in the world. He wants to take as many people to hell with him as he can. But hallelujah, if you're washed in the blood of Jesus and born again, hallelujah, I've read the back of the book. Look at somebody say, we win. We win. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to think about this for some, a second. Superheroes have weaknesses, right? Old Lex Luthor thought he had Superman when he got the kryptonite to it. All superheroes seem to have some area of vulnerability, an Achilles heel where an enemy can exploit that weakness. Here's the good news. Jesus doesn't have a weakness. So, oh, Brother Ben, they killed him. Only because he let them. He said, I could have called 12 legions of angels. If you do the math, that's anywhere between 36 and 72,000 angels that could have rescued him. Pilate, he stood eye to eyeball with Pilate and Pilate said, don't you know I have the power to release you or to crucify you? <laughs> I bet Jesus had to suppress a laugh. <laughs> oh, buddy, <laughs> you have no power over me except it was given you from above. He said, I lay my life down willingly. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it back up again. There is no weakness in him. Glory to God. Well, I'm trying to wrap this up. You enjoying the ride? We're gonna land this plane, hallelujah. Last, all right, superheroes are fictional. Jesus is real. I hate to spoil the illusion, kids. But superheroes are fake. They're imaginary. They're make-believe. I can see kids back in the back saying, ooh, I don't like that preacher. He said, Batman's not real. <laughs> it's hard being a superhero. Nathan had a birthday party years ago. And I, we thought we'd really surprise him. And we rented a bat suit. And I dressed up in that bat suit. Boy, did I look cool. It was a little snug in the wrong places, though. And I found out it's hard work being a Batman. I got out in that yard, running around, all the kids chased me. And I got up on the trampoline, I started jumping and flapping and letting that cape, you know, fly behind me. And the kids started attacking me. And I didn't have Robin to come to my rescue and defend me. I said, fooey on this superhero junk. I'm not doing this. I went inside and got out of the costume. <laughs> Smile, it won't hurt you. Superheroes featured in the movies are figments of someone's vivid imagination. 
Producers make them look real with movie magic, trick photography, stunt doubles, CGI, special effects. Think about it. Jesus is real. He's as close as a prayer. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And he promised, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you even to the end of the world. You ask me how I know he lives? That inner witness of the Holy Spirit. That I'm a child of God. Think about this as we close. Since Jesus rose from the dead, how many believe that? You believe that in your heart. Jesus literally, physically rose from the dead. Then do you think any of your problems are really that big to him? Tell somebody, he can handle it. Whatever you're going through, if it's an addiction, if it's conflict in your home, if it's a sickness in your body, whatever you're going through today, Jesus can handle your problem. Cast your cares on him. You probably like me, like some of these old shows, American Pickers and American Road Show, where they get these antiques and these collectibles. And the question always comes up in the conversations, well, what is it worth? That's what everybody wants to know. They got dollar signs in their eyeballs. They found something in their grandma's attic and boy, they want to know what that's worth. How much is it worth? And over and over and over, I hear on those shows this statement. It's worth whatever somebody is willing to pay for. All right, let's turn that. What are you worth? What are you worth in the eyes of God? You're worth whatever someone is willing to pay for you. And Jesus drained his blood on the cross because he thought you were worth it. Don't ever doubt how much you're loved. Don't ever doubt how important you are. Think of how valuable a soul is. The devil wants your soul and God wants your soul. It's valuable. What does it profit to gain the whole world and lose your soul? I don't know about you. I choose him. I choose Jesus, the greatest superhero of all time. Will you stand with me, please? I want you to bow your heads for just a moment. Hello everyone, this is Pastor Ben Godwin thanking you for watching our broadcast today. I pray it has been a blessing and a source of spiritual enrichment for you and your family. I'd like to invite you to visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more singing and preaching videos. Search for Good Springs Full Gospel Church at youtube.com. Also, please visit our website at goodspringsfgc.org where you can learn more about our church and ministry, read many of my articles on a variety of subjects, find a direct link to our YouTube channel, shop our online store, and donate to our church and help support our TV ministry with debit, credit card, or PayPal. Also, you can mail in an offering the old-fashioned way to Good Springs Full Gospel Church, PO Box 3161, Jasper, Alabama, 35502. We can assist you in any way in your spiritual journey. Please contact us. And remember, when all else fails, God's word works.